My name is Jonah Jonathan and welcome to the Jazz Musician's Voice. Tonight I'm presenting an interview I conducted with jazz bassist Tyler Mitchell back in 2011. Tyler Mitchell is an excellent bassist who came to New York in the 80s during the tail end of the jazz loft scene. Originally from Chicago, Tyler has worked with the who's who in jazz, including Vaughn Friedman, Sun Ra, Rashid Ali, Wynton Marsalis, John Hendricks, and many others. Tyler is an interesting cat because he uh, lived in Mexico for many years and he tells us a little bit about his time there and his uh, thought about uh, being a musician abroad and he returned to New York uh, in the beginning of 2011. I think you will find this interview truly informative and if you check out some of my other videos with uh, Eric Wyatt you can see Tyler Mitchell playing and performing. Tyler can be regularly seen at Small's Jazz Club performing with various artists as a sideman as well as his own group which plays original music. Thanks for watching and please stay tuned for future interviews. Okay ladies and gentlemen this is uh, the great bass player Tyler Mitchell um, and uh, Tyler could you tell us um, Tyler recently returned uh, to New York from, from Mexico. Could you tell us about um, how you first came to New York and um, uh, how was it when you first came to New York? I came, in, I came to New York in the early 80s and I moved here like in 84. Okay. And it, was, it was still, the loft scene was still going on there on the Lower East Side. Just before it got really, did, before they fixed it all up on the Lower East Side. And it's, okay. it's all yuppie now, but back then there was a lot of lofts, a lot of, you know, Poets and, and, and experimental jazz and things were going on, and I was on that scene. Okay. That's when I got introduced to Sun Ra, and, and I was working in the Blue. No, anyhow, it was a lot of little more places, you know, to play. But it was the money was, you know, the same as it is always. The same as it is always. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, with with the loft scene, did you feel like uh, musicians had a better outlet to play? Their creative music, or do you do you yeah, feel like? Yeah, it was a, everybody. Got, it was a place where people could really work out. You know, it was like a home base spot. I knew a few places like that in New York in, in the early '80s. I used to go to Studio We, Studio Wiz, Neither okay. Door, and they used to have different uh, music going on every day, concerts and rehearsals, and you know that's where I met Don Cherry yet and uh, great, right, yeah, cats doing free music in the that time. At that time, I, uh, I, I began working with a lot of people. I worked with Sun Ra for a while, I worked with Shirley Horn and Art Taylor. Great. Anyhow, yeah. I, I stayed in New York 15, 16 years, and then I moved to Mexico. I, you know, I just left for a jazz festival, and it was winter time in New York. I just stayed, and I started getting into the whole Latin jazz scene. Okay. Took, took, gave New York a break. Yeah, so could you, could you speak uh, about some of the reasons uh, you needed a break from New York at that point in time? And well, I needed a break because I was just burned out. I was working with a lot of people. I was just really trying to keep up with the whole, I was younger, I was wild, crazy, you know. Yeah, I yeah. I got caught into the whole drug scene, alcohol, and nightlife, and I just needed a break, you know. So sure, I left. sure. And uh, I didn't expect to be gone this long, 10 years. <laughs> and then I came back and I uh, started getting in touch with people on Facebook and MySpace and you know, you know, told me to come back and had work for me. And now I'm back, it feels fresh again to me. I That's know the good. people who've been here since <laughs> all this time, they don't, they don't have the same freshness that I have. And it's only because sure, I've been sure. only here a month and a half. And I've been working pretty good, steady, you know. But, you know I can't complain, there's a lot, a lot of places to play at. But the money thing is, is, is the problem. It's a lot yeah, of places to play at, but it's no money, you know? And, uh, you know, why do you think uh, the issue of money is, is a problem for musicians here in New York? Um, well, there's so many people, so many great musicians, and so many uh, student musicians, and they, they want, a lot of them want to play so bad that they'll play for free, or play for little nothing, so club owners don't even want, feel like they have to pay. Because yeah, because they, they can get it for free, you know. Yeah, I, I really, I really agree yeah. with that statement because uh, it's really, it's really becoming a uh, a serious issue for 
for for me, I see as a, as a young jazz cat coming out of on the scene. Um, what do you think should be done about what's going on with you know the influx of students, uh, all, all the current issues today in jazz? What do you think could be done to help improve the the situation for well, musicians? I think that. Um Well, we can't stop the flood of musicians coming in and all the students, but all we can do is like really uh, have to keep ourselves exclusive from, you know, it's, you know, it's a lot of sacrifices. We, it's, it's, I don't know, really know what to do about the situation, to tell you the truth. I, all I know is you just have to just concentrate on yourself and play and, and, and eventually your style and your, your, your sound will shine through and you just, you know, it won't matter. Because <laughs> I don't know, so many cats coming in. I can really say this. I can say, with all the musicians coming in, you could just be like we used to be a little more meaner and say, you know, you can't sit here. You know, but now everybody's a little more nicer. Like if a guy wants to solo and he doesn't know what he's doing and he's soloing for ten minutes, guys with the rhythm section just keep on playing. And they won't even, they won't even stop and, and, they, and tell yeah. them that's enough. Now, you know, it's a, little, it's a different scene now. But, sure. You know, you gotta be. You have to be a little more tougher. You know, these jam sessions and these things. We have to really keep ourselves distinguished from the students. You know. Yeah. And sure. And we have to stick with our price anyway. It's gonna be a lot of people. If, if everybody sticks with their price, it stick. It doesn't. You know, because people are, are undercutting you. It's always all these musicians that come out and they say, "Well, how much you pay in this band?" And they say, "Oh, we're giving them five hundred dollars a night." He said, yeah. oh, "Well, I'll do it for two fifty. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, that yeah. kind of shit you can't, you can't, you know, it's always going, you know, so, and sometimes they're not even that bad, sometimes they're really good musicians too, but they just start selling short, you know, <laughs> you know, so yeah, always, yeah, you know. Tell us a little bit about how it was in Mexico, uh, being paid in Mexico and, and how, how it worked for you down well, there. When I went to Mexico, I was making almost the same thing I'm making here, and it should be lower. You know, because everything is cheaper there. My rent, you know, is two hundred fifty dollars a month for a whole house. You know, sure. so everything cost of living is lower. Everything is cheaper, so the music, the gigs, were paying paid a little less too. But they feed you and they give you everything is cheaper there. So you really it comes. It's really like a lot more. So if you make if you made a hundred dollars on a gig there, it'd be like making. You know, it's like the same. As, a hundred dollars is like a hundred and fifty dollars, you know? Sure, sure. So two hundred dollars, so it's, you can do a whole lot. If you stay right there in Mexico and you make the money, that money is a lot of money. You can do a lot with it. If you try to take this money and go back to the United States, then it wouldn't so be it's really worth nothing. That's why a lot of musicians don't come over there except for like Wynton Marcellus or certain people because they got a grant, some yeah. kind of funding to come to do the gig. But if they had to depend on the Mexican government to pay them, it would be low money so sure but so if you're gonna stay there the money is okay but coming back here with the money going like going tour and you're going to Mexico you ain't gonna come back this way you never hear about sure, the sure. going out of Mexico on yeah. tour well what, what do you think about um, the value that uh, people in Mexico put on jazz as opposed to the value that that people here in in New York well, um, jazz is an American art form Mexico because people don't go there that often because of the cost of living it, Jazz musicians don't come there up. They don't have a lot of exposure to jazz. I was kind of like one of the only jazz, one of the only jazz guys from the states living in Mexico to really like was putting it on the map. You know, beginning in the past ten years I was there, it's, it's gotten it's more it's more of an interest in jazz now. Sure, than when sure. I first got there, you know, they like the music. They like they like they, they like jazz. They don't understand it yet. But uh, they, they like jazz. You know? That's cool. Yeah. Do you think um, Do you think as they become more familiar with the music and and as possible schools are established there, a, a similar problem will happen in Mexico as it as it is here in, in, in the states? Nah, it won't. It's only here that'll happen because in Mexico they have the other music that they have. Jazz is never gonna probably never, jazz is never gonna probably get that popular in Mexico. You know, okay. it might happen. It might be a, like that, get like that in Europe. I'm sure it's already getting like this in Europe. Yeah, yeah. I heard a lot of musicians tell me they just they don't even care if you go to about jazz musicians from the United States when they come to Europe no more because they got 
So they got the their European, own. They got yeah. their doing the same thing now. Yeah. yeah. So we got to work our problem out right here. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Thank Mitchell, you. for talking to us. And uh, you. you know, uh, where where can people check you out? Uh, I play mostly in Smalls. We're here at Fat Cats. But mostly you can find me in Smalls. The next concert I'm doing as a leader there would be June 19th. Wow, great. And uh, is there a uh, website where people could reach you at? I don't have a website, but you can get all my information on MySpace. I have a, I have a MySpace page. And, okay. Uh, well, uh, guys, check him out. He's a really uh, great bass player and, uh, you know, you. Uh, recently returned. So stay tuned. Thank you.